Shalom, all praises to Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham, Ha'a, Racha, Kwadash, double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, all are well. And Shalom to, hopeful, to the hopeful elect. Um, this video, basically, I want to get into chastisement. And um, chastisement's a tool that the Most High utilizes to keep you in check, basically. All right? You know, you may be um, being... Um, a sluggard with the work, all right. The Lord's got, you know, put you in check. You may be like spending too much time in the world. The Lord's got to put you in check. You might be engrossed, engrossed by a woman. Most High is gonna put you in check. Basically, any any means. If you're of the elect, the Most High really, you know, loves you. He's gonna he's gonna do pull out all the stops to basically keep you in check. And that's that's our walk of faith. And sometimes you may even feel like you're you know, you're justified in um in your stance, okay? But the funny thing about that is that there's always something <laughs> to really let you know you're not justified. Why? Because it says if it, you know, the the righteous um what's the word? Um our our righteousness is as filthy rags. So basically, all the good that you've done is as, you know, in the word for filthy rags there, I don't remember the word in the Hebrew, but if you look it up, it basically um, is talking about a, a cloth used for per period, all right? So, you know, a blood cloth, basically, cloth. So um, you're basically like, and you know when a woman's on a period, she's unclean. So basically, you're saying the righteousness that you have is deemed as unclean as a woman that has to be set apart from the camp, all right? Because really, what's what's the only thing that's keeping us um, with any form of stead within the eyes of the Most High Power? The grace of Yahweh Shai, who pinned, you know, all our sins to the cross when he went up on there, man. And basically become the sacrificial lamb, the scapegoat for the nation of Israel. And first and foremost for the elect and then for the rest of the nation. So while we in this walk, we're under the grace and mercy um, of Yahweh Shai, uh, of Yahweh through Yahweh Shai, okay? And that's why we really don't have no righteousness. So ultimately, when you deal with any form of chastisement, you always have to just revert back to the fact that you've done so much wrong anyway. And there's multiple, man, Elijah, when he went to the, I don't remember the name of the woman, but he went to her, um, her uh, house and was there and her son died I vaguely remember this story man but basically I don't remember how it transpired but I know her son died and she was like you know the Lord has remembered all my sins this day alright but that's the point that she said the Lord has remembered all my sins this day so they had to understand they had a form of humility to understand that at any moment the Lord could require those things that you've done, the way you've gone off, right? And even, yeah, there's a myriad of um, examples in the word, all right? Multiple. So, without further ado, I'm going to get into the lesson. So, this is Hebrews 12 and 5. And you've forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastising, chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou rebuked of him, all right? So it says despise it not. So when the Lord is, you know, chastising you, don't despise it. Don't, you know, don't say, oh, why, you know, why is he doing this, man? You know, nor faint when thou rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastiseth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Sirach 30, man, it says, he that loveth his son called him off to fill the rod. All right, and that's the same thing. The most uh, chastising us, man. All right, consistently. Hey, man, even me, man. Uh, the past, it is twenty twenty, as as I'm sure it has been for for many other many brothers, man. It's just been, woe after woe, but, in those woes, it's just like, you know, and some of them be silly, like crazy. An example that just for is about my phone. Left my phone in the gym. 
gym people found the phone, holding the phone, come to pick it up a couple of days afterwards, and they they like, oh yeah, we got your phone. Then go find go to ask them, and they're like, oh no, it's gone missing, and the phone just disappeared. Okay. And the L wasn't even that bad because it was with my backup phone, but it just it has a lot of videos and stuff like you know it's got micro card and all that kind of stuff. But it's those kind of little things and those are forms of chastisement because they they I mean that sounds so minuscule, but when you compound it upon all the different diverse things you're going through at the same time, work maybe women. Um, um, uh, family um, ailments in the body all these different vari- variations very various things you're going through in life it all compounds and builds upon builds up to be a stress in your life all right and weigh you down in the spirit okay but guess what that's for your pure that's for the purifying of your spirit okay to make you stronger man if you endure chastening you have a deal with you as sons for what son is he is he whom the father chastises if not? Hey, and basically, the ones that don't get chastised are them children. Them, but man, I remember growing up, the ch- the kids that could do anything they want be playing out till, you know, early, dead early in the morning when they're like 13, 14 years old. Them parents don't give a, 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 a excrement about them, man. All right? They ain't thinking about their safety, all right, or their future. And they usually they usually are um, strung out on drugs or something, man. They got some real issues, all right, mental issues or whatever, demons on them. Verse eight. But if ye be without chastisement, whereof are all, um, uh, whereof are all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. So if you don't partake, what all the men of the Lord are partaking in, then what does that make you? That makes you a bastard, man. Basically, you ain't one of the sons of the Heavenly Father. Alright, so I want to delve into this to show a key example of this happening. Alright. I'm going to just read this Luke 23 16. I'm going to read down to 25. And it reads um, I will therefore chastise him and release him. So let me kind of. So this is, you know. Pilate, I believe, speaking about Yahweh Shai, and you know, the the councils are coming, you know, them basically bearing false witness against Yahweh Shai. But yeah, so I'm going to read it now. It says, I will therefore chastise him and release him, for of necessity he must release uh, one unto them um, at the feast. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man. And release unto us Barabbas, whom the certain sedition, who for a certain sedition made in the city, and for murder was cast into prison. Right, so this guy was a murderer. But they wanted him. The false witness they bared against Yahweh Shai. They wanted that to stand as opposed to a a a a, a legit, real murderer. Yahweh Shai was walking around healing people, man. So. Why am I saying that? I'm saying that this was, you know, the worst kind of... He ain't done nothing wrong, all right? But yet, no one wants him out, man. They're chastising him. Okay, Pilate, therefore, willing to release Yahweh Shai, spake again to them. But they cried, saying, crucify him, crucify him. And he said unto them the third time, why, what evil have he done? Have found I have found no cause of death in him. All right, say he ain't done a, he ain't done a crime worthy of death. All right, I will therefore chastise him and let him go. So he ain't even done a crime worthy unto death. He ain't even done a crime. He ain't, he knew that Yahweh Shai ain't even evil, but to what to appease the people, he chastised him. All right, to make them you know simmer down and and calm and whatever, he chastened them. All right, he chastened Yahweh Shai. I remember Yahweh Shai. Is without God, all right. He basically came upon the earth and didn't do any form or manner of evil, okay. So it says, I would therefore chastise him and let him go. 
and they were instant with loud voices crying that he might be crucified and the voices of them and the chief priests prevailed right so they they jeered on so hard that you know they basically you know got roused up all the people okay and Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required and he released unto them him that for sedition a murder was cast into prison whom they had desired but delivered Yahushua to their will and not only what do you have to take from that Yahushua he was an innocent man never did no form of evil no form of wicked the reason why this happened was for the will of Yahweh Bar Hashem Yahushai Bar Hashem Harakha Kwadash alright it was for his will to be fulfilled prophecy okay because there's, there's mo d d d d d multiple prophecies that would follow off the back of that alright only leading up, up to even more prophecies playing out because Yahushai returning um, right now it wouldn't be a thing if, if well, what does it say in the book of Revelation? They also who pierced him shall see him, right? Behold, he cometh with cloud, and they also which um, pierced him shall see him. Man, that wouldn't even be a prophecy if it wasn't for the fact that he went upon the cross. So it's like a domino effect. All these things that played out lead up to the end, all right? When Yahushua returns and we go into the kingdom, okay? So um, I want to finish on the scripture. This is Titus, the first chapter, and twelve. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, "The Cretans are always are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies, right? So they lie a lot, full of evil, and it's slow to die. You know, slow, slow, slow in the head." This witness is true. <laughs> Paul said it's true. All right. So this church, for example, is saying with the Christians, it's true. All right. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply. So, yo, you got to keep man on point. Yo, if man's doing any manner of, of wrong, get onto them relentlessly. Okay. And they may be sound in the faith. That they may be sound in the faith. Um, and I always think of, I do this with, um, the few siblings that I've got and when I engage with them from time to time I test them I pick their brain uh, and try to get to some form of reasoning alright and show them why they're, they're, there's a there's a, a fault in their, their fault patterns you know and that's really you know the rebuke just to kind of purge out that evil okay and I know they're just kids they're in the world they ain't in the faith or nothing like that but man, if 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 I have if I'm gonna have any form of relationship with them, hey, I can't have you being a a total dummy, basically. But it's the same way. If I had a child, I'll be I'll be onto him, onto her, likewise. All right. So that's that's how we have to be. We have to be, you know, coming that same spirit, rebuking sharply. So verse fourteen, not giving heed to Jewish fables, and commandments of men, that turn from the truth. Unto the pure, all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is devour, defiled. Sorry. It's luckier. So with that, man, I pray you edify it. Say shalom.